What is going on guys? It is Steven, your semi-comprehensive guide here, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to connect your Nintendo Switch controller to your PC. So in today's tutorial I'm only going to be showing you how to connect your Pro Controller to your PC, not how to connect your Joy-Cons. The process for connecting Joy-Cons is a little bit more complicated, and for me personally I've never wanted to connect my Joy-Cons to my PC because they're not as comfortable as the Pro Controller, but if you would like to see a tutorial on how to connect Joy-Con controllers to your PC, then be sure to leave a comment down below and I'll get started on that right away but for now I'm just going to focus on the pro controller so let's get started with how to connect it to your PC so there are a few different ways we can connect our switch pro controller uh, the easiest way is via just a cable and we can also connect via Bluetooth if we don't want to have uh, a wire hanging out of our controller all the time. We can also connect via a Bluetooth receiver, but that is a little bit more complicated and it's used mainly with the Joy-Cons. So for the Switch Pro Controller, I'm going to be showing you how to connect via Bluetooth. And starting off, I'm just going to show you the easiest method, which is the cable method. So first, just grab any USB-C cable, preferably the one that came with your Pro Controller. So plug the USB end into one of your computer USB ports. Try to go for one of the newer version USB ports, so a USB 3.0 or later. Uh, those are the blue ports, so try to find one of those to plug it into. And of course, then plug the USB-C end into your controller. Uh, and right away, it should light up. You should see player one on the indicator light on the controller and sometimes the blue ring around the home button will also light up when you connect it so that lets you know it has been connected if it's not showing up like that try using a different usb port be sure that it's plugged in all the way and then sometimes it just doesn't light up at all until you open up a game or a game launcher like steam so let's go ahead and do that right now so i'm going to be showing off steam in today's video and all the settings and preferences in steam but all the settings in steam pretty much apply to any other game or game launcher like epic games or battle.net or any standalone game that you might download all these settings should apply to those as well so i'm just going to open up steam here and if you're connecting a controller for the first time, most likely Steam will want you to open up big picture mode. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And for me, I can already navigate through the menus and stuff with my Pro Controller, just like I would if I were on the Switch, really. So now I'm going to head up to Settings, and I'm going to go down to Controller Settings. And in here, we have a bunch of uh, configuration support. I'm going to enable the Switch Pro Controller configuration support. It's not really required to have it enabled, but I enable it anyway, just so it's uh, easier to use. You can change the button layout and stuff. I usually only change the button layout in-game, so I ignore this as well. And then down here, we can actually see information about the controller so we can change the uh, controller preferences so we can change the name the uh, haptic preference rumble stuff like that the uh, little home button light and then if we submit that we can go down to the registered accounts so if we have multiple steam accounts on this computer be sure to have your account as the registered account not any other account and be sure to actually register it before you play it won't work if you don't register your account and then down here we can just identify the controller give us a little rumble and we can calibrate rate the control sticks um, but mine are just fine so i don't need to worry about that so i'm going to back out of here down here we can change some more general controller settings as well like an on-screen keyboard that we can uh, use with our controller and some other configurations here but those aren't as relevant and i don't change any of those i just leave those as the defaults and it works out just fine so i'm going to now back out of here and a few more settings that weren't listed in there i want to change before i move on to how to connect via bluetooth so in the library here if we go down to rocket league as an example game here we have more settings so we can manage game settings so we can manage the preferences and stuff like that but up here we have the controller configuration and controller options so controller configuration just allows us to change all of the different button configurations for this specific game but the main thing i want to focus on are controller options so if you're having trouble actually using your controller in game and it's not connecting or it's disconnecting as the game is launching be sure to have forced on as the option set for Steam input per game setting. If it's set to a PlayStation or Xbox here as the global setting or it's off, then you will not have your controller work with any game really. So be sure that this is forced on. Uh, if you have the switch configuration already enabled in the settings, you can just leave it as global, but I like to force it on for each game just so it stays and there's nothing changing about it. And the rumble settings, I just leave that on as well. I'm going to press OK, and now I'm going to just back out of here. And I'm not going to test it out yet because I want to now show you how to connect your controller via Bluetooth. 
Alright, so we were back here on my desktop, so most likely when you're done using your Pro Controller with your PC, you're going to want to reconnect it to your Nintendo Switch. Alright, so let's get started with the Bluetooth method. So luckily, Nintendo made it pretty easy to connect our Switch controller via Bluetooth to really any device. So, all we have to do is, on the back of our Switch controller, there is a small little reset and pairing button. So just press that. You might need a sharp object like a pin or something to press it. It's kind of down in there, so... I can just use my finger now, hold it down for a few seconds, and you should see the indicator light flashing back and forth. That means the controller is in pairing mode. So now we can go to our computer settings, go to devices here, and then go to add Bluetooth or other device. Just select Bluetooth, and right away our Pro Controller shows up here. So I'm just going to select it, and it should connect right away. So the Pro Controller is usually a lot better about actually showing up on our pairing list and connecting right away. Other controllers, like the PlayStation 4 controller, can take quite a while to show up and actually connect, so good on Nintendo for actually making a decent Bluetooth controller. So we can now exit out of here, and I'm going to open up Steam again. Alright, so right away Steam is asking me to put it into big picture mode, so I will do that just to make this easier. So if you didn't see the first method I showed uh, on how to connect your controller via cable, I'm going to just go over those settings again here. So head up to settings, you can go down to controller settings, and be sure to have the Switch Pro controller configuration support enabled uh, if you can change the button layout if you want. Down here we can see that our controller is showing up, it is detected. Uh, we can change the preferences in here, change the name, the haptics, rumble, the uh, home button light. We can register this controller with an account, so if we have multiple Steam accounts on this computer, be sure to register yours as the controller's account. So, uh, yeah, be sure to have that registered. It might not work in certain games if you don't have it registered. So, I only have one, so that's not a problem for me. We can identify the controller. It gives us a little rumble there. We can calibrate the control sticks. Mine are just fine, so I don't want to do that. And we can just back out of these settings... And the last setting I want to change here is in library. If we just open up any game, I'm going to use Rocket League as an example. We can go to manage game. And in controller options, be sure that forced on or global setting is set for Steam input per game setting. I leave forced on as my option. Um, it's worked out for me. You can also leave it as a global setting. Just be sure to have your controller support enabled like I showed just a few seconds ago. In the controller settings, be sure that Nintendo Pro Controller support is enabled and you can use global but if it's not then you have to use forced on so I just leave forced on in case there are any changes that I don't like so forced on for me you can change the rumble in there as well and right above that we can configure all the buttons for this game so we can change all of the different settings and all the different things that these buttons do so we can do that either here or in game so I'll do it in game if I want to do that so it really doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to go back out, and I'm just going to do a quick test run in Rocket League. All right, so you can see right down there I had a notification saying that the configuration is loaded for Rocket League. Uh, so it detects my controller. If you're not seeing that option pop up, uh, it might still be connected, but in my experience when that notification does not pop up, it usually means the controller is not connected. So, uh, so mine did, and that means it is connected. You can see all the options here. It has my control button shortcuts instead of the regular keyboard shortcuts. So I'm just going to go into a game here. And you'll see some of these buttons are showing like Xbox buttons. So it has like the yellow Y button. It has the B back, uh, the red B back button too. So uh, it might not be the most accurate to the Switch controller, but Xbox and Switch are the same button configuration. So yeah, everything is running smoothly aside from that little quirk with uh, the Xbox buttons showing up. Instead of the switch buttons, everything runs smoothly. You might have to change a few button configurations to your liking just because it is defaulting to the Xbox configuration. But other than that, everything works just fine here with the Bluetooth method of connecting. So now let me just uh, finish this video off by showing you how to disconnect your Nintendo Switch controller from your PC and how to reconnect it to your Nintendo Switch. Alright, so we were back here on my desktop. So most likely when you're done using your Pro Controller with your PC, you're going to want to reconnect it to your Nintendo Switch. Unfortunately, there's not a great way to keep your Pro Controller connected to your PC 
while also being remembered by your switch you're going to have to forget it on the PC side in order to reconnect it on the switch side so I already have a driver error on my pro controller because I disconnected it from the PC so I'm just gonna remove it completely now and if yours is currently connected be sure to turn Bluetooth off so on the switch side go down to controllers and there are a few different ways you can actually connect your controller. The easiest way though is to just select change grip slash order. So be sure your Nintendo Switch Pro Controller is in pairing mode. So once again, hold down the button on the back for just a few seconds and you will see the lights flashing on the front. And just press the L and the R button together a few times and it should connect eventually to your Switch. Sometimes it can take a few seconds before it finally connects, but it should connect just by going to the change grip option. But if you are having issues connecting using that option, you can go down to Find Controllers, once again, put it into Pairing Mode, and do the same thing, press L and R. Once again, it might take a few seconds for it to find it. So try that option next. If neither of those is working, then you're going to have to get a USB-C cable, plug the USB end into your Switch, plug the C end into your Pro Controller, and press the L and the R button, and it should connect to the Switch that way. But most likely, you'll just be able to reconnect it by changing the grip in the order and pressing the L and the R in pairing mode and it should connect right away. And be sure to have Bluetooth turned off on your PC because if it's still on and it's still paired with your PC, the Pro Controller will just default to your PC and it'll connect directly to that instead of your Switch. So be sure that Bluetooth is off on the PC, be sure your controller is in pairing mode, and be sure that you are on the option change grip order on your Nintendo Switch and it should connect right away. So that about does it for today's video. If you'd like to see a tutorial on how to connect your Joy-Con controllers to your PC, be sure to let me know down in the comments down below. Like I said, that is a more complicated process, but it can be done even without a Bluetooth receiver. Uh, so let me know down below if you'd like to see that. Also, while you're down there, if you have any other suggestions for future videos, be sure to let me know in a comment as well. Other than that, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Anyways, I've been Steven, your semi-comprehensive guide, and be sure to have a wonderful rest of your day.